to kind of go back, um, you probably just saw this screen, but with Inside of Sage, you can, uh, so some of the solutions that we have with Inside of Sage is that you, we can do the click to pay, uh, where you can send the customer the invoice. A uh, customer then opens up that invoice so then they have a pay now button, uh, just like this. Um, so then that way the customer can then pay and then there'll be a new import button directly inside cash receipts where then it creates that cash receipt payment or uh, um, cash receipt entry for you. Um, now, some of the options that you have available uh, with this solution is that you can do both credit card and ACH processing. So, um, you know, maybe you have some customers that would do a very large invoice, you know, maybe like 50,000, 100,000, 200,000, and you wouldn't want to pay those uh, credit card processing fees. So then you can deactivate the credit card processing option for click to pay and only allow that, that particular customer to use ACH. So on the customer level, you can pick and choose which payment type you want that customer to have access to on, uh, on that particular customer. So maybe other customers, you only want them to do credit card or both. So you have those options and that flexibility. Um, and because it's leveraging paperless office, you can actually send that invoice to multiple people. Um, so, you know, uh, the main contact is Pam Wilson, but if you wanted to send it to maybe three or four different people within that company's um, AR department, then you can do that too. Now, this is important right here. It has the email address and zip code. So what this pertains to is the actual customer portal. So if a customer if you wanted to give your customers access to a customer portal where then they can see their open invoices and pay on those open invoices, um, you can either give them their own username and password or they can actually um, activate their customer portal um, from there as well. And so they can do that by entering in the email address and the zip code, and then this syncs up uh, to Sage to then give them access to that customer portal. Um, so you have a lot of flexibility uh, with that. Um, and then we can customize what this logo looks like. Uh, this is the standard one that we use, but if you wanted to have a particular branding or anything like that, uh, we can customize that within Crystal Reports as well. Um, and then just like other solutions within, within Sage, uh, like Paya, for example, uh, you can actually store that credit card information within Sage. Sage. Um, so, if you uh, enter in the credit card information here, um, you would just go to the customer record and then the additional tab, and then you can store that payment information. Now, when you store that payment information, you, it doesn't actually store the unencrypted card, so it creates a token. So it basically changes that credit card number to a series of numbers, letters, and symbols. Uh, and that way you're storing that card information in a secure and PCI compliant manner. Um, for credit card processing, level two and level three processing uh, is activated within the module. Um, so you don't have to uh, do anything special or anything like that. Uh, anytime you process within Sage, it will actually pass that level two, level three data uh, to, uh, to get you the lowest rate possible when it comes to processing payments. Um, so let's see, Sage is still not responding. Uh, so it looks like I'm just going to have to go through. Um, and so, uh, yeah, it looks like my Sage isn't responding. So I might just have to use the user manual. Um, Um, and so when, when you click the submit card uh, icon inside of Sage, uh, what will populate depending on the payment type, you'll see the uh, credit card processing screen. So that way you can see that you are storing the credit card. Um, and then if you're doing the ACH information, you can provide the, the ACH information for that, um, 
uh, for that person's bank. Um, now it gives you additional data fields. You don't have to enter in this information in. Uh, the billing street address will pre-populate that data from what's, uh, what's within Sage. But if you wanted to capture this data uh, for the uh, checking account information, you have those options to, to store that uh, data as well. And, and that way, you know, with ACH, it's, it's 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 better to have more information just in case the ACH payment was to bounce. Um, and again, we do the, the level two, level three processing, and it's the actual information from Sage. So um, as you're processing that credit card payment, that uh, line item detail will, will flow with the payment to give you the lowest rate possible. Now, uh, any place that you process with inside of Sage, you can do that within sales order entry, invoice data entry, cash receipt entry, repetitive invoice entry, as well as with uh, credit memos within AR and SO um, uh, invoice entry. So as you enter in a sales order, you can do both uh, deposits as well as pre-authorizations. So that way, if the customer you maybe you had a back order where you need to put 50% down and then 50% uh, on a net 30, then you could take that prepayment so that that way it registers that payment on that particular transaction. Or maybe you wanted to do a pre-auth. And so a pre-auth is where you can create a reservation on that person's card. So maybe the order is $100 and after shipping and everything, uh, the actual total then comes out to 150. So then you can convert that that pre auth and and uh, capture it for another fifty dollars. So just like I always use this as an example, but just like when you're at a restaurant, the server comes to you with, with the bill. You give the server your card. They they process the credit card for the price of your meal. They'll give you the book back, and then you'll put in a tip or in our case, shipping. Right. And then so when they go back to their system, they'll close out the invoice for the total amount. So same thing with Inside Sage, where you can uh, capture that with the order and the shipping all included. So uh, from the customer experience level, when they look at their online billing, uh, they could they'll see the total of the total invoice, not the shipping and the, and the pre auth and everything will be the total dollar amount. Um, so you do have that flexibility when it comes to processing payments. Um, so as you enter in the sales order, you'll go to the totals tab. And then depending if it's an ACH payment or a credit card, you'll uh, select the drop down to activate the number five payment tab. And then once you get to there, you can you have a couple, op a couple options from here too. So if you don't want to store the card, just enter in the payment type. Uh, the payment type, we typically set it up as CC for credit card. So just enter in the payment type and then click submit card. Um, now, if you wanted to charge the card and store the card, so maybe um, uh, maybe you're entering the order and instead of going inside customer maintenance, you, you'll just do everything all at once. So if you enter in a payment ID, this will also store it from the sales order screen where it will tokenize the card and process the payment, but in a, it will also save it uh, to customer in it so that you can uh, so that you can process that that credit card payment at a future date. Uh, now you'll also notice down here this is for the credit card terminal. So again, it is uh, cloud EMB. Um, so what that means is that you can do both swiping cards, you can do the chip cards. Uh, you can do Apple Pay, Android Pay, and also contactless. So what contactless is where you can, uh, uh, just like Android Pay and Apple Pay, where you actually hover uh, your credit card over the machine, and then typically the machine beeps and then reads the payment, reads the, the credit card without actually having to swipe it or insert it in. So th those are kind of newer cards that have come out. Uh, if you look on your credit card, it kind of looks like it has like a little Wi-Fi symbol on there. And so uh, that references uh, contactless where you can hover over the, the credit card terminal and it'll read it and process. Um, so depending on the payment type, you could do a deposit or a pre-auth. Uh, in this particular instance, we're not storing the card. Again, we're just using it as a one-time payment. So enter in CC for credit card, the dollar amount, and then click submit card. Um, 
And then this will open up the screen for then where you can enter in the credit card number, expiration date. Um, the CVV is optional based on your risk controls. So you can choose if you want uh, to uh, view that or, or you know put that in there or not. Um, same thing with, with, with deposits. So then that way, if you didn't want to do a pre-auth and just do a deposit, then you can enter that dollar amount and process from there too. Now, as part of the solution, again, level three um, is included with it. Um, it pre-fills out that data. So there's not anything else that you have to do, but we do give you the option to where if you wanted to enter in specific information into the level three processing, it will pass that data uh, in there as well. So if you click on level three, you can actually enter in that data yourself, or you can have the system enter that, that information for you. So we'll pre-populate that data. Um, and then when it comes to the EMV, if you did the payment type, so, um, you know, obviously most of the time with retail, you, you're not gonna store the card. You're just gonna uh, process it as a one-time payment. Uh, you do have the option to store it, but if you didn't want to, you can do that from here too. So typically you would enter in the payment type and then select the credit card terminal that you want to activate. Now, again, these credit card terminals are, um, are uh, cloud enabled. So, you know, I could be in California and activate a terminal in Wisconsin and that person can, in Wisconsin can then uh, use their Apple Pay to then uh, process that payment. So you're not tied to um, a particular environment where you have to activate that terminal. And then we can relabel these to anything that you want it. So you have John's terminal, Robert's terminal, uh, you, you can pick and choose what, what that is. And then it can also default to that workstation. So um, that way, as soon as you select the payment type, the system will already know that it's Brett's terminal or John's terminal. So if we're on John's workstation, it will always be set to John's terminal. If it's Brett's, then it will always be on Brett's. That way you're not having to add those extra clicks. Um, so we created that within the memory to, to, to know um, which terminal is on that workstation. Um, and then as we process an invoice data entry, um, kind of same thing here. And um, trying to go through this. And so that is kind of the, the process within site invoice data entry. Um, but if you don't have uh, inventory and, and you're just using AR, you can also process that process the payment within invoice date entry as well as within cash receipt entry. So for cash receipt entry, that would mainly be uh, for your customers on terms. Um, so as we select, uh, you know, depending on the, on the payment type, um, you would, you, you know, you would select that. So uh, I'm going to skip invoice date entry because we already did that. And so when you're inside cash receipt entry, um, you'll notice that there's a new button here called import. And so that pertains to your, your click to pay or your customer portal. Um, so when those customers uh, pay, all you have to do is click uh, import and then it imports and creates that cash receipt for you. Um, so what we always say is now you have a new employee that basically works after hours and on the weekends. So now you can give your customers the freedom uh, to pay when they want, you know, so maybe they, they are paying it uh, on a Saturday um, cause that's when they have time, you know, so that way it's not tied to nine to five, it's tied to whenever they want. Um, and again, it imports that, that uh, cash receipt so that, um, you know, your AR department doesn't have to manually key in that data. Um, but if the customer does call in, they can also process that as a standard cash receipt within cash receipts. Um, so you would create a new deposit number, uh, you would select the customer. And then uh, once you have that information there, you would go to lines and then pick the particular invoices that you want to pay. 
And then once you have that information dialed in, it will then come to the payment tab where then you can process that payment. Uh, and again, you could do the cloud EMV. Uh, you can click submit card to do it as a one-time payment or like this one, for instance, we're using the stored card ending in 1111. Um, and then so since we're using that stored card, I can just ask the customer and say, hey, you know, do you want to use uh, your Visa card in 1111? Yes, I do. So then you can click submit card and then process that payment directly from there. Um, and, and so this is what the click to pay would look like. So once you click import, it would download those uh, click to pay payments and then post uh, those receipts directly from there. Uh, and other than that, I think that's about it. Uh, so as kind of a recap, we offer uh, multiple payment options. Uh, what I showcased, showcased today was Fortis payments. Uh, we can also uh, do Paya as well. So as we work towards like discovery calls and, and knowing what would best fit you, there are certain feature functionality that uh, that others, some can do that others can't. Um, and so we would welcome uh, that discovery call to learn more about your business and, and help find you the, the right solution. Um, and other than that, I think that's it. Uh, we welcome to, to learn more about you folks and, uh, and I uh, look forward to talk with you soon. Uh, thanks so much.